Hello everyone and welcome back to the campaign speedrun series. If you haven't seen part 1 and part 2 yet, please go check them out. A link will be in the description. The objective of this series is to start with a fresh campaign and to complete the tech tree in as few launches as possible. For the first launch, which was in part 1 of this series, I used stacked flea boosters to get to Orbit of Carbon on the first launch. In part 2, I started my second launch. This used quite a lot of Reliant engines to get four separate modules into low carbon orbit. Also in part two, I took the first module I put in orbit and brought Bob Kerman to the moon and Minmus and all of the surface biomes on those bodies. This brings us to part three, the video you're currently watching. I've got three modules from the second launch left in orbit, and this video will detail the trip of those three modules. The initial destination of the second module, which is the first module we're seeing in this video, will be again to the moons of the Moon and Minmus. This might seem a strange choice, and while I want to head off any misguided flaming that might occur here, I also don't want to give away the exact outcome of the mission yet, so I'm going to go through the flight of this module pretty quickly, and I'll explain my decision making here at the end. I did use this as an opportunity to pick up some biomes I had missed on the moon, and then over and picked up some I had missed on Minmus. This module is identical to the module we saw in part 2 of the series, and that module had only made it to the moon and Minmus. However, that went to all the biomes, whereas this one just stopped one time on the surface. As a result, I have quite a lot of Delta B left over. I'm going to use the first chunk of this Delta V and bring this campaign interplanetary by putting it onto a transfer orbit to EVE. On the way over, I picked up a goodbye and a light gravity assist from the moon. While an open utility bay makes a quite effective air break, the shock heating on an EVE capture is also pretty terrifying, so I used a little bit of a capture burn to safely capture an orbit of EVE. From there was a short set of aero brakes on EVE, down to an elliptical orbit of EVE, with an apoapsis that, that coincided with the orbit of Gilly. Now would be a good time to note that there was a lot of science collection going on in this mission. This video isn't going to depict all of the research gathering, and I'm not going to talk about it. Just take note of where I'm bringing this mission, and you'll know where I've gathered research from. Once I've retroburned and captured in orbit of Gilly, it takes very little Delta V to actually land on Gilly, and indeed very little Delta V to keep landing in every biome on Gilly. Once I've reorbited around Gilly, I'm down to 1,335 meters per second. This isn't enough to go anywhere and really land on anywhere useful, so I'm going to use this remaining Delta V to head over to the Duna system. After injecting back into an elliptical orbit of EVE, I eject from the EVE system, snag a gravity assist off of Kerbin, that puts me onto an intersection with Duna. Once I reach Duna, I can use its atmosphere combined with low orbital velocity to safely aero break into a captured orbit. I also headed over to Ike, braked down into a low Ike orbit to pick up some more research, but didn't have enough Delta V to land so I punched a ticket back home by ejecting back into a close pass of Duna, and then ejected into a transfer orbit back to Kerbin. Once I've reached Kerbin, I use a combination of a small retro burn with some arrow breaking to capture into a Kerbin orbit. Like what we saw in part two of this series, I'm going to rendezvous this module with one of the other modules that I put in space on launch two. This will allow me to transfer the research data over to Jebediah Kerman, who is going to land this data back on Kerbin for Bob so Bob can stay in space and keep doing some science. Jebediah has used some of the remaining Delta V in this module to take careful aim for Kerbin's rare Badlands biome, which will allow us to pick up just a little bit more science data for the mission. As with some of the previous maneuvers, being able to open and close the utility bay to increase or decrease our drag during landings and aero braking approaches is extremely convenient and allows me to aim my exact landing zone. 
The EVA chute also allows me to aim the exact landing zone, which is great because it means I can hit exact ridge lines without actually having to be that accurate for once. Copying our approach from the first module, Jebediah Kerman's going to bail out at about 6 kilometers, snag the research data out of the capsule, and bring it down himself. Another good reason to use the Badlands biome is that the Kerbal Space Program would never dream of crash landing a module near a populated area. We're going to take stock of the profits at the end of the second launch here. We still have two modules in space to land. Bob Kerman's been transferred over to the third module, and we're now going to send this one interplanetary. Based on how much science I was earning so far, I decided to bring this module right over to the Joule system. This transfer from Kerbin to Joule is going to use another extremely complex set of gravity assists. I'm going to take one gravity assist off of the moon, then one off Eve, then back to Kerbin, then a second one off of Eve, and then two more assists off of Kerbin to put me onto a clean approach with Joule. Now might be a good time to put out a slight apology for my much delayed series on advanced orbital mechanics. I'd really hoped to have some of the episodes out on gravity assists by now. It keeps getting delayed because this is a project that's proven to take a lot of time. The precision that I need to speak with to really do a tutorial about gravity assist properly requires time that I just haven't had recently. It's definitely a project I'm still working on. It will get done. I have no promises about when. After reaching Joule, I use gravity assists off of Tylo and Lathe to put me onto a intersection orbit with our first landing destination, which will be Pole. One technique I used throughout this mission to pick up some surface biomes that I might not otherwise have seen was to put myself onto an approach with these moons that allowed me to go into a polar orbit and land on the poles and make it to a surface biome that's pretty difficult to get to otherwise. While Pole isn't as small as Gilly, it is still smaller than Minmus and as a result, it takes very little delta-v to land on pole and then hop over to some of the nearby biomes to pick up, again, more sweet, sweet science points. The combination of high research point modifiers in the Joule system, as well as the small amount of delta-v needed to go from moon to moon, means that it's very efficient to pick up more science points here. It's only a short hop over from pole over to bop, and I can continue the massive looting of research points. I don't have much to say about BOP. It's slightly larger than Minmus, but still pretty small. Very efficient to jump around on its surface and pick up more surface biomes. After BOP, I hopped over to Val. I didn't have enough Delta V to be able to land on Val's surface and then make it back to Kerbin, so I just took a quick flyby before continuing on to a gravity assist off of Lathe that put me onto a highly elliptical orbit around Joule, and then used another gravity assist to throw me onto a transfer orbit back to Kerbin. To maximize the efficiency of this transfer, it usually makes sense to do a reverse gravity assist chain of what got us here, but I had some delta V left over, not enough to land on Val, but enough to use to conveniently do some retro burning upon intersection with Kerbin that allowed me to capture in a single pass. For the third time in this series, Bob completed the maneuver of arrow breaking down into a low Kerbin orbit and then rendezvousing with the fourth and final module that was put in orbit by the second launch. The Kerbal tasked with grabbing the science data from Bob this time was our favorite Kerbal knot, Bill Kerman the engineer. This turned out to be quite appropriate because this was the landing that I had problems on. There weren't any more relevant surface biomes to aim for, so for style points, Bill has decided to aim for the ocean just off of the giant impact crater. Bill's accuracy was on point and his landing zone was narrowed down to a pleasingly aesthetic area. Not so pleasing is that apparently as a level 1 engineer, Bill Kerman does not have access to an EVA chute. Even more pleasingly, the module lacked a parachute as well, due to some very prudent weight savings. Fortunately, Bill Kerman had come in fourth place at the 1988 Summer Olympics 3,000 meter platform dive.
With this giant trove of research returned, it was time to take stock of how many science points I actually had. It turned out it was a lot, so I went to the administrative center and turned on an administration plan that turned 71% of my science points into funds. If you haven't figured it out by now, we are going to more than fill out the tech tree on this second launch. And still, there was one more module left in orbit of Kerbin. The first three modules that we've seen were exactly identical in design. This fourth module has been designed specifically for a mission, mostly for style points. The first task of this machine will be to repeat our gravity assist route from Kerbin over to Joule. This time I decided to take the easy route and only go with one assist off of Eve and then two assists off of Kerbin to put us onto an intersection with Joule. This route saves quite a bit of time at the expense of a little over 100 meters per second more than the most efficient route that we saw in the previous Kerbin to Joule transfer. The capture around Joule was done quite similarly from the first time. I used a gravity assist off of Tylo to capture and then an intermediate assist off of Lathe, then a final gravity assist off of Tylo that put me onto an intersection of Lathe with a slow relative velocity to Lathe. This allowed me to capture just using an arrow braking pass off Lathe with no retro burning necessary. From here, it was a long set of arrow braking passes of Lathe from a elliptical Lathe orbit down to a low Lathean orbit. Once in low Lathean orbit, this module splits into two. The rear module will now be left in low lathe orbit, and the front module will be landed on the surface of lathe. This lathe lander is only certified to return a Kerbal from an elevation of 5 kilometers or more, so it is very critical that Bob Kerman takes careful aim for one of the tallest peaks on any of the lathe islands. The large island with the prominent crater lake offers a perfect opportunity here with a roughly equatorial peak which offers elevations of as much as 5,200 meters. Fortunately, the utility bay doors are extremely effective in allowing us to control our descent and how fast we are slowing down. For the final landing approach, the Kerbal Space Program has made a very rare concession to actually use real parachutes. Tipping during the final touchdown was a real hazard. Please note Bob Kerman desperately using the attitude controls on the crew module to keep it from tipping over. Once landed on the surface, Bob Kerman did the requisite reconnoitering, the research, flag planting, hiking, swimming, all that necessary stuff. After some absolutely blatant collusion with the Lathian government, it was time to head back to Kerbin. In terms of engineering effort, this module has received quite a lot more love than the other modules seen in this series making this able to complete an ascent from lathe without much technology and without a lot of mass was quite a challenge and i wanted to make sure that i had made this as light and as small as possible the first trick here was to detach all the science equipment on the bottom of this module we've already done all the research that we need to do in this mission and as a result we can feel free to leave it as a totally legitimate bribe to the lathian government the next trick was more absolutely outrageous use of part clipping to make the drag on this extremely low. This allowed me to execute an extremely efficient gravity turn without doing too much work against aerodynamic drag. As a result, this single stage orbiter has enough gas to get us to a surface speed of over 1400 meters per second with an apoapsis of almost 70 kilometers. Normally, the most efficient approach to orbiting lathe is to get an apoapsis just above the atmosphere at 50 kilometers. However, my plan here is to finish the circularization of Lathe by using Bob Kerman's EVA pack. I can't eject Bob Kerman when I'm still in the atmosphere because the high ratio of drag to mass of Kerbals would mean that he would slow down extremely quickly. As a result, I have to wait until I'm above 50 kilometers. If my apoapsis is right there above 50 kilometers, I'm not going to have any time to finish this maneuver before I'm falling back down to, to Lathe. Putting my apoapsis a ways above this gives me some time to inject into a full orbit of Lathe. Once back in low Lathe orbit, Bill took a couple orbits to rendezvous and reunite with the bottom half of the module. 
this module has been left with just enough gas in it to get Bob Kerman safely back home to Kerbin. To do this, we used a final ejection assist off of Tylo to put us onto an intersection with Kerbin. This rendezvous with Kerbin proved to be a little bit too spicy to achieve with one retro burn, so I did an assist off of Kerbin to put me onto an intersection with Eve and use that gravity assist to get me a second rendezvous with Kerbin at a bit slower orbital velocity. Once home on Kerbin, we can do a final set of aero brakes back down to a low Kerbin orbit and then get ready for the final landing of the second launch. The challenge with landing this module was that it was extremely unstable in a rear-facing descent, but also prone to overheating in pretty much every other arrangement. To make this practical, I used some of the remaining Delta V to help control my attitude. This was still pretty tricky because I didn't have any stability assist available to me, and as a result, Bob Kerman had to do some rather frantic stability control. In a move that most certainly did not endanger the KSP's paradigm of not discarding boosters over top of highly populated areas, Bob Kerman decided to show up Bill by ejecting from an altitude of 54 kilometers. After a long freefall, Bob Kerman pulled the cord on the EVA chute and enjoyed a sunset paraglide into this mysteriously untitled city. So now let's start talking about what I'm going to receive from the full second launch. I've recovered four separate modules all from the second launch, and pretty early on I realized that I had a lot more science points to work with than I needed. As a result, the choices I've made in this mission were mostly made to maximize how much funds I was going to be able to get and how much reputation I was going to be able to get. This ended up putting a pretty high priority onto completing missions. This is why I made a return to the Moon and Minmus during the use of the second module, because that's where my missions were sending me at the time. In the second launch from a fresh campaign, we've landed on the Moon, Minmus, Gilly, Pole, Bop, Laith, and gotten rendezvous of Eve, Duna, Ike, Jewel, and Laith. More rendezvous would have been possible, but it was starting to get in the way of getting back to Kerbin in time to complete my quests, and more importantly, it was starting to get in the way of my sanity. Once I realized I was going to achieve my goal of maxing out the tech tree, I did want to get more funds, but absolutely maximizing how many funds I was getting was not an absolute priority. The 4,000 additional science points is more than enough to finish up the remaining two unlocked technologies in the tech tree, and the more than 7 million funds is more than enough to finish upgrading every building in the Kerbal Space Center. Even after unlocking the entire tech tree and upgrading all the buildings, I still have just over 2,000 science points and just over 3,750,000 credits. All of this has been achieved in just two launches from a fresh, stock, standard difficulty campaign. With the giant amount of funds we have remaining, we can build anything we want, grand tour, you name it. I'm calling this campaign done in just two launches. With that said, this brings this series to a close. Thank you very much for watching.